Hey guys, I thought I'd take a little time in this video to check out uh, this Emerson television, which is one of a pair I picked up a few months ago during an expedition up north where I uh, dropped off a television to its new owner and while there I uh, ended up purchasing uh, two of his existing uh, vintage TVs, uh, both Emerson TVs and both uh, basically no longer working. This is a man who really liked to watch his vintage TVs, and uh, he had a local guy that kept them running, but he deemed both Emersons as not worth the money it would take to get them running properly again. And uh, this one in particular, I believe he said, had a bad uh, picture tube. Now, what uh, really got me interested about both of these sets is... Um, that uh, I ended up with some of the paperwork from the work that had been done on them. And so one, I'm curious to see what amount of work has actually been done to these and is pitch tube really bad. I was also curious to see what the costs were. Now, I'm not knocking anybody if I was trying to make a living off of doing this uh, full time, I would no doubt uh, have to charge um, similar prices. Uh, so what we can see here is uh, the cost for some of the replacement tubes and components and some of the labor costs. So for example, a 25Z6 tube, 5V4, a uh, coil, resistor pack, some controls, and pretty, uh, pretty generous prices there. But again, hey, uh, if uh, you know, if you're running a shop, you, you got to charge uh, a premium on this because you got to make money. And uh, one of the others, I don't think it's this sheet, uh, but he had a a charge for uh, attempting to rejuvenate the pitcher tube. Uh, and he charged, uh, I think it was over fifty dollars. Which, uh, as I think I've mentioned before, you know, all these pitcher tube testers, CRT testers, maybe I should say, have a rejuvenate function. And I've cautioned people in the past not to use that. Because uh, it's my understanding that, um, yes, it can work, but it was also kind of a gimmick for repairmen to make a quick buck. Because it can um, give... An improved picture on the picture tube, but uh, can actually shorten the, whatever life is left of it. It's certainly not something that you should do often, and without uh, being fully aware that it's what it's actually doing, which is stripping off some of the emittive surface on the cathode. And uh, the cheaper the tester, the more crude the technique. Uh, one of the most basic testers is just. There's a capacitor charged up to a high voltage, and it's discharged to the CRT and blow, blasts the cathode, basically. Uh, but back in the day, hey, you know, you'd carry this around to a customer's uh, house, pop it back off the set, plug it in, hit the red button, bam, hey, they get a brighter picture, and you could tell them at the time, hey, it's only a temporary fix, you know, a few months, you get a brighter picture, they make, they make a few bucks, and they know they'll be coming back either to uh, replace the picture tube or, hey, maybe talk them into buying a new set. Uh, so I'm curious to see what condition is the picture tube really in. Also, I suspect neither of these sets has actually had a full recap. I believe the other set, um, which I did see powered up, uh, could no longer get a, a, a picture really, and I uh, didn't have sound. And he had said the sound like basically could not be repaired, which I found very curious. So uh, let's take a look. Now these are both a rather pretty sets. Um, the uh, other one is a 571. I'll take a look at the model number of this in a moment. Uh, I'll look around the back. Both sets are from the late 40s, both 10-inch sets. I have a Bakelite version, basically, of this set. Uh, 648 and um, my intent at some point is to get both of them fully functioning if I have to replace the picture tube I will and I'll probably end up selling them but uh, first let's take a look at uh, what's inside and see what work has been done and test the picture tube
here's a look at the back. Now I can see it has a model 637. And it has the original back. Uh, both sets are in very good condition. That's why the picture tube uh, is bad. I think it is worth investing the, uh, the resources to replace the picture tube. And boy, that is a clean set. That's the original paint job on that high voltage cage. Wow. Other than a little light dust, uh, no corrosion. Chassis in fantastic condition. Let's peek inside. Those are some interesting looking tubes. Or are those caps? Well, I think those are electrolytics, but those I'm sure are not the originals. It might be a rather nice job of recapping the electrolytics. Might be a technique I've seen recently. I don't remember where. I think it was online somewhere where uh, they were the type of their uninsulated wafers, and the outside of the can is at uh, not a ground potential. And the originals had cardboard sleeves, but I've seen some guys take large diameter heat shrink tubing, and after recapping the inside, they put that over it and then shrink it up. Oh, it seems like pretty glossy plastic, like vinyl or something. So well, that'll be interesting to see what's going on there. Pitch tube. Well, it's 10 BP4 that I'm sure of, but uh, I can't tell if it's the original or not. Uh, interesting cover. Usually the CRT uh, base covers are part of the back, but in this case, it's separate from the back, it's actually attached to the chassis. I don't think I've ever actually worked on an Emerson. I own several, uh, a couple of the seven inch guys, I think. And as I said, the Bakelite version of this chassis, but uh, not the wood version. Emerson, uh, they made some decent quality stuff. Uh, and they had some interesting design features in some of their TVs. Yeah, speaker facing straight up in the vent. Maybe not the best idea in hindsight, because not only does the sound come straight up, but of course, uh, dust gets right down on the speaker cone. Alright, so I'm pretty sure this is secured to the cabinet. So, two things I'm going to do. One is take this off to test the CRT. Two, uh, get the uh, chassis bolts out so I can pull the chassis out. Alright, let's do the boring part first, testing the CRT. It is a Filco branded CRT. I'm not sure. If it's the original or not, Emerson didn't make CRTs, they had to buy them from somebody, but I don't think Philco did either. So it could very well be a replacement. Alright, well, it's certainly glowing. New shorts, new shorts. Cut off. But, man, certainly got great emissions already. Cut off, uh, let's drop the bias down a range, yeah. I see this all the time, where uh, you need to uh, use a different bias for the control grid than it's originally designed for. Uh, from my experience, it's not a big deal in actual operation. Yeah, those, <laughs> those things only been on for a few seconds. Uh, those are pretty damn uh, good emissions and life test. Wow. I mean, I find it really surprising that the diagnosis was a weak picture tube. Because, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's about as good as they're ever going to find one. That's testing like a brand new picture tube. The life test is uh, just rock solid. That should produce a very, very bright picture. Well, hmm. Let's get the back to cut off. Yeah, let it sit a little while. See if anything changes. And uh, then see we're pulling the chassis out.
After about 15 minutes, the emissions were still rock solid, so I'm going to move on to pulling out the chassis. Now, all four chassis bolts are present, but two of them have been replaced, it looks to me. These are quite possibly the originals, but that might be a replacement. I should mention, uh, there are actually not very many places that are willing to work on a set this old. I've, I've heard stories from people that they either get um, quoted really outrageous amounts, thousands of dollars to repair a set, or they're simply told that it can't be done, or it's not worth doing. And, and to be fair, well, you know, it's, it, uh, it can take a lot of work, and uh, typically if you charge competitive rates for labor, most people won't, wouldn't be willing to pay that kind of money on a set like this. So a lot of them end up getting restored by the owners themselves. They just take the plunge and learn how to do it. Or they find people who are willing to basically eat the eat the labor costs and, and just charge a, a minimal amount for labor and charge for parts and they do it for fun, like, kind of like myself. Um, and uh, I've got more TVs than I than I need, that's for sure. So uh, I've been listing some on eBay and I'll be listing more. And I've kind of decided, which may surprise some people, that I'm going to be listing actually. For the most part, my nicer sets. There are a few prize sets that I'm going to keep for myself. Hopefully, maybe for the rest of my life. But uh, I realize that it's not only easier to sell the sets that are in better condition, but uh, it'll be less trouble for the new owners. So I'm going to kind of keep the dogs for my sets, or the, for myself, for the sets that have some personal value, and the sets that I know are going to need some tinkering to keep them working. And, is I, I've come to realize there are people out there who really like to watch these TVs and they want them to work reliably. So that's, that's what I aim to do is to get the better sets working well and to pass them on to new owners so they can enjoy them. Just had to pull off the knobs, remove the four bolts, disconnect the speaker, which plugs in with an RCA jack, and uh Hold it right out. And yeah, boy, that is clean. And yeah, these are rebuilt, or not rebuilt, but replacement caps. And uh, yeah, these are premium. I'm not saying the, the, the caps these are particularly premium, but these are, well, like audiophile type They're guys who are building new. Uh, New amps using vacuum tubes might buy. I'm not familiar with Richie Gold's, but uh, I've seen kind of caps kind of like this. Let's put a hot glue down in there. I'm guessing 0903 means it's from 2009. So probably those are okay. This might be an original over here. And again, this chassis is just crazy clean. I mean, not only is it corrosion free, it's dust free. Alright, well, everybody wants to take a look underneath, including me, so let's see what we've got. Also notice there are notes scattered around here and there. Don't know if that means they've been replaced or checked. They're just notes so somebody could follow while these were working. Uh, these are replacements and not exactly the best job. Hot glue has failed. Things are kind of floating in space. I do not like the looks of this power resistor one bit or hot glue that's failed. Uh, another power resistor kind of floating in space. There's some okay parts, and here's, I think there's some sprig orange drops up here, some generics, some parts doubled up. Uh, yeah, not, 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 not crazy about the quality of the work, that's, that's for sure, so. A lot of parts doubled up here. Well, that being said, I know the guy who had this used it, so I'm inclined to try powering it up, but I definitely want to go over this. And this, this is the kind of thing that makes me think that picture tube is probably just fine. And that the problem lies in quite possibly some of this work not being quite up to snuff. Another part hanging here in space, spliced wires secured um, so 
could be a component value wasn't quite right that was put in here. So what I'm thinking that could be a, the, if the picture is dim, it could just simply be because there's a component value that's off, which is um, reducing the high voltage level. And I'm inclined to think this is the original paint, and it's just that nice. This tuner sure looks familiar. It looks just like the one that I see in all the admirals I worked on. Which was actually not made by Admiral, made by, I think, Standard. Uh, standard Coil, something like that. So certainly other manufacturers use the same type of tuner, but the good thing is I'm very familiar with these, and I've got uh, spare parts for them if need be. So, unfortunately, you know, sometimes it's actually um, kind of a drag to work on sets other people have worked on because if you're not sure where the problem might be, you kind of have to just go over and double check all the work that's been done, neaten everything up, double check all the wiring, all the component values, and yeah, that, that can take a lot of time. And again, all these notes make me wonder where there's some parts substitutions and these little screws look like they may have been removed. Is this a replacement vertical output transformer where component values modified to accommodate a part that wasn't a perfect, an exact replacement? You know, all that kind of stuff can really, really generate a lot of headaches. Alright, so let's give this a try. Now, uh, again, not to knock anybody, but uh, I mean, I've certainly heard tales from people in the service industry, like be it cars, TVs, whatever, that you know, sometimes they get tired of seeing the same device come back and back, and they might just tell the owner that, hey, you know, it's, I just can't, it's, just, it's just not worth repairing anymore. Um, that, that may very well be the case here. Uh, so then I'll have my work cut out for me to go over this set. And it's not like I have unlimited time myself, but uh, I certainly would like to give it a try. All right, all tubes are lighting up. Don't have the speaker plugged in right now, so I won't hear any sound. I'm hoping I can get a raster. Here's high voltage kicking in. Don't really know what the controls are. I'm trying to peek over the cabinet. Well, this is supposed to be brightness, and uh, we've got nothing. It's not going to do anything. I'm going to grab a high voltage pro for the heck of it and see what we've got. Alright, well, it seems we have no high voltage, or essentially none. Like 310 volts or something like that. There's, there's 31, or, yeah, 31 volts, I guess that is. So, uh, yeah, that, that's no good. So even though it seemed like I heard the high voltage kick in, uh, we don't seem to have any high voltage, which typically means the, high vol uh, the uh, horizontal oscillator isn't running. I'll take a quick look inside the high voltage cage, maybe the horizontal output tube is bad, something like that, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's going to require some uh, more extensive troubleshooting. I popped open the high voltage cage and checked all the tubes inside, and there are quite a few, and uh, surprisingly, some of them appear to be the original Emersons, you'd think for a set that was used a lot. Especially like the uh, horizontal output tube would be bad, but no, they all check all right. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I, I did try rotating the uh, ion trap around, but again, we saw the high voltage was low, so it's definitely 
Uh, that is a major problem right there. The flyback appears to be a pretty standard one that was common to all the early RCA and Admiral Sutton. I've got some spares, so uh, if that's the problem, it could be replaced. But with all that work that's been done below, who knows? Who knows? Uh, so for now, I'm going to pop the tubes back in, give it one more try, and. Uh, well, uh, I definitely look forward to working on this, I don't know when, and uh, I fear it may take a bit of work, but I definitely think it's worth the effort, because it's, uh, it's a, a really nice set. Well, I got the tubes back in, so let's give it one more try, just for the heck of it. Get the high voltage probe on there again. Hmm. Well now, <laughs> we've got a raster. How about that? I'm going to move the ion trap magnet back here around a bit. And it's faded away. Oh, well, no, it's still there. It's still there. And yeah, that is uh, pretty darn bright. So, could it just have been an issue of tube got knocked loose in transportation, but he... I mean, clearly he was written off by the service tech as having a weak pitcher tube, so... Hmm, that's a puzzlement. And that looks like... Might almost have something there. <laughs> How about that? I bet if I get a speaker hooked up, we're going to have some pretty good sound, too. Let's contrast. Focus might be in the back, so it the focus is off a little bit. It must be horizontal. Oh, look at the brightness down. Well, it seems to me that actually this set is working pretty good as is, which <laughs> is not what I was expecting at all. A speaker, and yeah, we've got sound. Not great sound, a bit distorted, but yeah, there's sound. So, it seems that it was just the case that one of these tubes was a jar. So, uh, yeah, I'm as surprised as anybody. Uh, now, I still uh, intend to fully go over this set and clean things up down below, but, uh, geez, yeah, it's, it's actually uh, pretty darn functional as is. So, uh, yeah, my plans stand changed. I uh, want to go th uh, over this thoroughly, and uh, I'll end up uh, selling it at some point. In the meantime, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at an Emerson 637, and I hope the Emerson, I think it's a 571, ends up being um, in a similar state.